Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. We are currently on about a six week adventure to Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, Glacier, Roosevelt, National Parks, probably spend some time in South Dakota. And we left home, we have made absolutely no reservations. And so we just want to kind of talk you through. This is not our first time doing this. <laughs> uh, we've done this when we went to Yosemite, Redwood, Sequoia, uh, all the way up to Olympic National Park. We did this for Utah Mighty Five. Yes. We did this when we spent a month in South Dakota. <laughs> and so, and to Smoky Mountains. Yeah. And so we just want to kind of share with you how we go about traveling with our RV without making reservations. And why? Yeah, and we're gonna kind of divide this video into four parts. We're gonna try. One is why. Another is the planning. Another is the uh, when we travel. And the fourth is gonna be the locations where we stay. So let's start with first thing you want to know is that all of the campgrounds we're talking about, all the ways that we're talking about traveling and camping, it's all dry camping. We're not talking about going anywhere with hookups. S except maybe water. Okay, one thing we neglected to mention and that is if you have a specific time that you need to be at a specific place, make reservations if you can. Um, that mission trip we mentioned, uh, we... Um, knew that we were going to be at Lake Superior over the 4th of July. So for that section of time, we made reservations. The rest, we kind of winged it. But when there was a specific place that we knew we were going to be at, when there was going to be a lot of traffic, we went on and made those reservations. Okay, the first is why. Why did we do this? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One is we get gorgeous campsites like the one we're in now that are huge and a second is and free <laughs> they're free some Folks, of them yeah we don't mind paying for a national forest campsite for a state park campsite but it's so one of the reasons is we do get gorgeous campsites one is it's usually going to be a little bit less expensive. And a third is we get to see the site before we decide. Decide. We have made some reservations before, gotten there, and had to suffer through the campsite we had. Um, you know, like here, if we had gotten to a campsite, found out we can't quite do that, we have no service. We can't cancel this site no. and get another one. And so... And we love the freedom. Uh, an example, at Yellowstone, please watch that series of videos if you've not, uh, about divide and conquer. We tried to divide the park into the east, south, west, and north so we could explore each section separately. Yes. Had we made reservations, we would have had to stay in the east longer than we really wanted to. We, By not having reservations, we were able to say, I think we're through here. We might as well move on. We have seen everything we, we wanted want to, see. to see or that I'm able to go to see. Yeah, so having that flexibility of being able to move when uh, you f you're finished exploring an area and move on to that next one or uh, Utah Mighty Five, we added a stop. We'd not planned yes. to be at Grand Escalante, uh, Grand Staircase Escalante. We were to add that, or Olympic National Park, whenever we were doing the Redwoods and the Oregon coast. We were able to make some changes on the fly. Yes. So those are reasons why we really enjoy this. So part of the planning is when. And I, <laughs> Sharon's our, our planning person. And when basically means shoulder season for us. Yes. Uh, it's September. And... The crowds here are June, July, and August. And so by getting here in September, there are fewer people going for the same spots that you are. Yes. And um, 
that also means there may be some openings in other places that there weren't before. So choosing those shoulder seasons and basically you can think of the peak season being from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Shoulder season, depending on where you're going, mid-April and all of May or September through mid-October if you're in the south extend those yes. by at least a month on each side and another thing about timing is if we're going to a dispersed site or a first come site our goal is to get there as close to noon as we can folks before if we can most most campgrounds if we're going to a national forest campground check out is it noon so we want to be one of the first people to get there for the available sites we're not going to be stalkers driving around <laughs> sitting in a chair waiting for people to leave not that kind of thing but um the site we're in here we actually got here about 10 o'clock 9 30 or yeah. 10 and um we're able to the guy we actually passed the guy leaving that had left this yes. site it's the only one in the sites that are on this grassy river road uh, that's between the Grand Tetons and the uh, and Yellowstone. There were people driving through here at, you know, like 7 o'clock last night looking for a site. Well, you're a little late yeah. if, you're, if you're trying to do that. So getting to those first come sites as soon as you can. Also, I want to say this is not for everybody. <laughs> Bless you. If it's going to drive you nuts to not know for sure where <laughs> you're going to be. And that's not based on your first time out. We were a bit apprehensive on that trip to the Smoky Mountains. I don't know about this, but it worked out beautifully. It was so amazing to have that freedom. Yes. Uh, that it really, we got addicted. <laughs> um, but, so that tells you why we do it that tells you when we do it and i have to tell you there was something very cool about a six weeks trip to the redwoods the oregon coast all the way up into idaho back down to home having spent a hundred and five dollars was how much we paid for lodging so that's going to get us into um planning and, and I want you to understand, this is not, well, let's just get in the car and see what happens. Um, we generally have a good idea of the things we want to go and see and do. Now, does that change some on the fly? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> but I generally have a good idea where we're going to go and those kinds of things. And for places we're going to stay, I will have three, sometimes four options and sometimes more of places we're going to stay oh one last thing about the timing an example when we were coming to the east side of Yellowstone we actually got in three mile campground because it's three miles from the <laughs> east entrance but we got to Cody about six o'clock yes. in the evening we did not drive over and try and find a campsite that night we might have been able to but we chose to spend the night at Walmart, which we called and made sure that that was allowed. Based on the other 15 <laughs> or 20 people there, it, it was. was. <laughs> but we spent that night there so that we could get up early and get into those National Forest campgrounds. And folks, there was a whole list of National Forest campgrounds as you're coming in. We started at the one closest to the park, found a spot. We didn't have to keep going back. But we had those options knowing that those first come sites were spaced out. Um, when we are going to disperse sites or free sites or things like that, we do our best to have at least three options, sometimes four, so that, and that's another thing about getting there early, is if that first one doesn't work out, then before dark, you still have time to check out that yes. second one or third one or and fourth one. Also, having our bikes, she can scope out and be sure there's a place to turn around if we don't find a spot. See, that's you'll probably want to either pull the trailer over and walk up or bike if you have a bike. Depending on how far it is, but that's another part about planning is, folks, these places we're going to, I have looked at on Google Earth. 
And so I can't always tell. Um, if you if it's a place where you can drop the little man down and walk around, do that. But sometimes you just have to go to Google Earth and zoom in as close as you can and say, hey, there's a big RV there or uh, that one, I'm not sure, that looks awfully tight. Uh, but you can't tell everything. So having the electric bikes is a good thing. But part of that planning is of those three or four places, I want to choose three or four places that I have checked out with Google Earth. I've checked out with Campendium or other apps like that. Um, I will make a list and then Malina goes back and she's much more thorough about reading all of those reviews saying, Sharon, did you see that people were saying whatever about this place? And good I'm, or bad that is part of the planning is checking these places out as much as you can before you get there reading the reviews looking at it on google earth uh checking the distance between locations that you're going to be able to get there within the allotted time that you are hoping to etc and then having options so that it's not just oops now what do we do now there have been times uh, another thing about the flexibility is we've changed on the fly. But let's talk about places that we stay. So where do we stay? Overnight stops, as much as we can, it's going to be a parking lot. Um, Cabela's, Cracker Barrel, Walmart, uh, Bass Pro Shop, places like that. And when I've looked at how far it is between distances or whatever, I see that Walmart, I call and ask, do you allow overnight RV parking? And if they say no, it's usually because there's a city ordinance. And we also had a Bass Pro Shop yes. or a Cabela's. I can't remember which one. They said, we don't care. Yes. It was but uh, there's a city ordinance, so I can't promise you won't have a knock on your door in the night. We don't want to stay there. No. But there was one time where things hadn't quite worked out like we thought we got to a parking lot with a cheapo depot yeah, or something like that Malina called the police department to find out we don't see any signs and she said i'll have the patrol officer stop by and he came by said there are no signs you're welcome to stay here and i'll just come by several times during the night hey, it was wonderful for us <laughs> and another thing is we're not going to stay anywhere we do not feel safe uh if either one of us says i'm not sure we keep rolling but so for overnight, we're going to be in parking lots for the most part. Um, and I want to add, just because at overnight places, please patronize the place where you're staying. Yeah, we stayed at that Cody Walmart. We bought <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our bear spray there. We bought, we stocked up on some things Yes. Um, because we were staying in their parking lot. Um, Anytime we stay at a Cracker Barrel, I'm getting breakfast. That's just going to be part of thanking them for letting us be there. Um, at Cabela's, and some of them have a dump station, but it costs 5 or $10. Unless you spend $5 in the store. Unless you buy something, yeah. We're going to make sure we spend $5 yeah. in the store at um, least. But then, so parking lots. We've mentioned National Forest Campgrounds. Uh, many of them will have some reservable sites and some first come sites and it's amazing how many of the first come sites are available um, but uh, so National Forest Campgrounds we love those uh, you know when Mylena's Pass we get half off um, but National Forest Campgrounds sometimes Corps of Engineer will have some first come sites uh, dispersed camping which is what we're doing right now where you're just kind of out there but this dispersed site, we have bear box, picnic table, firing, vault, toilet, <laughs> trash. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then um, one that we really started on our trip to uh, California, which was one we'd not done. Yes. Um, hotel casino parking lots. And we spent a lot of nights uh, in free. hotel casino parking lots. And each casino has their own regulations. Uh, if you talk to security, they're going to be the people that actually know. Uh, you don't have to go in and spend money in a casino, but you can fill up with gas in their parking, in their uh, convenience store, or uh, get a breakfast, or uh, things like that, where you're patronizing that place for letting you stay. But some of those hotel casinos 
we'll let you stay. One of them let us stay four nights for free. And, and there was one on the, sounds funny, but there was one on the mission trip that said you could only stay one night. And we went in and talked to security, security, and they said, no, stay as long as you want because they're hoping you'll come yeah. and spend money. When we called, that was we were told one night, and then when we went and actually talked to security, they said, no, stay as long as you want and move up some and told us where to park. Yeah. Um, but... Those are the hotel casinos on especially the West Coast. Um, the one where, that was four nights, there was a security guard rode out. Um, they were on bikes, took, took down our license plate. We asked him, Do we need to do anything? He said, Nope, we have you checked in. And we told him we we're gonna go visit some family. And they said, Well, as long as you're coming back, we said, Oh, yeah, we'll be here every night. Um, and so that was awesome. Another resource. At national parks, um, a lot of times the rangers will be able to tell you where you can go and um, find those dispersed sites that are just outside of the park. But the rangers may have a different idea of what's doable. When we were at the north entrance of the Grand Canyon, the ranger, we asked about some dispersed sites outside the park and he said oh yeah there's one's not bad at all we started up that road and we thought we the pets we were left the crazy. rv yeah we left the rv with the pets and went to check it out just driving and it was a long washboard road and so we opted not to go there but folks this is we love traveling this way it is an adventure it does add to the adventure <laughs> i think it does it does and I mean, just like that mission trip we were talking about, um, I had put down like 450 miles, which is a long drive day for that. But the first day, we're excited. We're going. Yes. And we were getting close, and we both said, I can keep going. So can I. So Mylena got out her phone. Fortunately, we had service. And started looking and found uh, a great dispersed place there in Arkansas that we, uh, that we stayed at. A couple so, hundred miles, maybe farther, farther along. Yeah, and it was a it was a perfect spot. So, like we said, this is not for everybody, but we absolutely love it. We love the freedom. We love the flex flexibility. We love the fact that all of that money we're saving on campgrounds, we're able to put into another trip. Yes. <laughs> and so, if you are curious about how this is done, this is how we do it. And I do want to make one other note, and that is size matters. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we I was just watching because there was a yes. Class A, a large Class A. This is dispersed. There's some wide open spaces. But folks, for that National Forest campground that we stayed at on uh, the no east way. entrance, smaller is better. Let's face it, a conversion van can stay in a tent site. Um, we downsize so that we have a lot more options. And that works for us. So as small as you can be and travel comfortably, that's what you want to go for. If you are interested in how we go about taking these long adventures without having reservations, this just kind of explains our process and what is what has been up to this point at least successful for us. And um, if you have any questions, comments, be sure and let us know. Thanks for watching Two Tired Teachers.